Oh, is this one? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> ah, uh, so yes, uh, that's me, Ruben. Uh, these are my colleagues. Uh, I work for a software company called Raaf Technology, who uh, specializes in open source data center automation. And OpenPCF is uh, our main product, our main uh, open source thingy. And I'm going to tell you today about OpenPCF, about what it is. I'm going to show you how uh, the framework works. I'm going to show uh, how you can use it in practice, you know, how you can use it on a machine and to configure it automatically. And I'm going to show you how you can use these results to bootstrap an empty data center. So to use a machine as a beginning to automate the rest of your uh, environment. I will close my talk with uh, a quick overview of current features, upcoming features. And um, before I start delving into OpenPCF itself, I want to give you a quick overview of the context. Why did we develop something like OpenPCF? So context. Um, anyone who's, who, who has been involved with data centers or you know large rooms filled with computer systems will have noticed that data centers have many uh, different platforms. Um, if you're walking into a data center, you will see Linux systems, Windows systems, AIX systems, Solaris systems, uh, different versions of these operating systems. Underneath the operating systems, you will see different architectures, Spark, Itanium, x86, 64, whatever. So lots of different platforms, and this difference uh, sort of hurts, of course. You know, it's, 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 it's a given, but it's, it's, you, know, you have to deal with it. But even though you have to deal with it, these platforms have common needs. They need to be installed and they need to be configured. And to do this, we hire, uh, we hire departments of people to, you know, to do installations. And these installations uh, give you varying and often isolated degrees of automations uh, for these needs, well, automation for these needs. Yes, so what you see happening, for example, is that if you look at two data centers next to each other, let's say, for example, a Philips data center and a Nuon data center, you will notice that these people are essentially doing the same thing, only they're going about it in their own way. They don't have any way of you know, sharing implementation ideas, uh, you know, maybe by coincidence when they meet each other at FOSDEM, but you know, not, at, uh, uh, not, not structurally. So there's lots of variance in how, how these tasks are, are done. So this variance in how what is automated is also compounded by a, uh, a few uh, you know, obvious uh, facts and a few less obvious ones. First thing is, of course, that different people do things differently. If you are not thinking about storing uh, what you are doing to change a machine in software somehow, then you automatically become dependent upon uh, people itself. And what that means is that uh, the individual neatness of the person, the individual skill of the person, becomes a factor in the product that the data center delivers. So it will have effect on, on your, you know, on, on if you are able to actually uh, deliver a system on time or, you know, to be predictable in your time. Now, different teams do things differently also. So if your data center has thought about, for example, saying, Okay, let's segment in a, a Linux team or let's segment in a, uh, a Windows team and an HPUX team. Then these teams will, you know, do what you ask them to do, uh, like automate installation and configuration. But they will usually do it with their backs towards each other. The HPUX guys will go about it at the way they know. The Windows guys will go about it the way they know. Linux guys, same story. So all this leads to variance in delivery times and variance in implementation. And uh, you know, when we were thinking about, you know, couldn't we create a piece of software that somehow abstracts this difference in platforms away so that you uh, can, you know, more easily capture the expertise needed to configure services and then reuse that expertise on different platforms. So what is OpenPCF then? OpenPCF, first and foremost, is an extensible framework. It's something that uh, a human can use to you know, store expertise, create a service like a DHCP3 service or a Bind9 service, write it once, and then for every uh, platform that OpenPCF knows about, never rewrite the service, simply lift the service, run it on the other platform. Because of this, obviously, it is an automated service configuration tool. This is maybe the first, first thing that OpenPCF is, actually. Um, we do automated service configuration in a cross-platform way. 
And because of this, it becomes a software provisioning tool as a result. This is uh, an important distinction. Um, if you have worked with uh, uh, installation systems like maybe Spacewalk or if you're more into the commercial things like HPSA, Radia, Altiris, what these guys are doing is that essentially they take a big set of standard services like uh, DHCP, PXC, uh, BIND, um, NFS, SIFS, HTTP, uh, global, uh, put them all together in some sort of static uh, thing and then, you know, put an interface on top of it and then tell you that you can install, for example, Linux and Solaris with it. Well, we wanted to take another approach to this and say, what if you could generate all these services you need and then have OpenPCF help you with using the services you generate to do installation? Um, we aim to support all operating systems. This is our credo. Um, when we uh, develop something new for OpenPCF, when we uh, you know, think about uh, changing the model or changing interfaces, we think to ourselves, can it still match this credo? And it's, it's a lofty goal and maybe an impossible one to reach, but it's a noble goal, so we keep it in the back of our minds. So it's written in POSIX-SH. Now POSIX-SH is cool because POSIX-SH is a very, cool, a very low common denominator. It's something that runs on 95% of the uh, operating systems out there nowadays. And even the systems that don't have it like by default, like Windows or DOS, have good upstream implementations for it, like SIGWIN and services for Unix or whatever they call it nowadays, because they've changed the name so often uh, on Windows. And you have DG GPP on DOS, which is actually also in a complete POSIX environment. It's licensed under GPL v3, so it's open source. And at the end of my talk, I will uh, give you, a, uh, obviously, a link to the web page where you can download it and check it out. So let's take a look at the framework. The framework, uh, first and foremost, exists from, uh, from, oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> from platforms. Oh, don't try to read this. This might be a little bit uh, difficult to read, but it's just for illustratory purposes. Now, uh, a platform in OpenPCF is an abstraction that tells it about a specific operating system. Now, for example, here we have four little squares, and these squares uh, uh, are different variants of Red Hat. So you have version 4 and version 5, i 6 x86, 64, and here we have an example one called RHEL 5, x86, 64. It tells OpenPCF about what kind of init system is used, where is data stored for binds, where is data stored for some other service modules. It, it tells it about, you know, specifics of that platform. And we currently have quite a few platform descriptors. This is the current stable version. Five operating systems on uh, uh, a lot of different architectures, totaling 16 platform descriptors that we currently know about. On these platforms, we can set up surfaces. Here we have a, a surface. And if you look at this surface, um, you can see, for example, this is a DHCP surface, which has an implementation in it called ISC DHCP3. Of, of course, this insinuates that any service you can make a machine provide can be implemented by multiple uh, systems. It doesn't have to be ISC DHCP3. You can create an MS DHCP uh, module and then, you know, have, uh, have, have create a Microsoft service. So, um, currently we have 15 services in the main distribution. So there's things here like uh, uh, you know, uh, Bind9, DNS service, SMTP by POST62, uh, IMAP, POP, SASL, SMB, LDAP, NFS, all kinds of uh, services with 18 implementations in total. Here you will actually see the example of having multiple implementations for a single service, which actually has to do with the fact that certain services are not available on all platforms, so you have to take that into consideration. So these services can be grouped, and they can be grouped in roles. It's obviously um, very convenient because if you don't have roles, then you know you cannot easily you know group machines in functiona functionality wise. So these roles are associated with configurations. A configuration uh, stores information about your landscape. What does your data center look like? Um, how many networks does it have? One, five, ten? How big are these networks? How are there sitter masks and net masks uh, associated? Um, names of companies and, and, you know, company information that is used to generate certificates. That's all uh, stored in a configuration. And lastly, a configuration associates a platform. So if you uh, look at this example, here you have an example of a complete configuration. And this is a configuration where OpenPCF has enough information to actually configure the services defined in the role on the platform of choice. 
And the nice thing about this is that you can switch like this your uh, entire configuration to different operating systems. I think that here we switched quickly from Red Hat to Debian to NetBSD, and it will give you the results you expect. It will configure these services according to the specifications in your configuration and set these services up automatically. So then you as a human, what can you do with OpenPCF then? What commands can you actually run with OpenPCF if you have a complete uh, configuration like this running? Well, you can build configurations, obviously, clean them, install them, uninstall them, start them, and stop them. This is what you actually type at the command prompt to you know, generate configuration and make it active or take it away. So knowing, having this quick overview of the framework, how would this work on a physical machine? So let's take a look at automated service configuration in practice. We take an empty machine. Suppose we're on an island, we only have a couple of CDs with us, and coincidentally these CDs are the current platform descriptors, of course. And um, you want to install your machine. So there's no luxury like PXC available yet or something. So we insert the CD, install the operating system of choice. We place OpenPCF on the system in, say, slash root OpenPCF or slash OpenPCF, whatever. You can actually leave it. You can actually take OpenPCF off if you're ready with a machine, by the way. Uh, you place a small configuration file, which is really small. This is, uh, this is actually the, the entire configuration file for an, uh, an OpenPCF run, run if you don't have to change anything, if you can work with existing platforms and um, existing roles. So here we associate a role with uh, here the universal role. Uh, here we associate a platform and here we uh, have our company global information, and here we have our networking details, which is an array of networks which are named and which have a sitter mask. This array can be as long as you want, and this will take care of, uh, for, for example, um, uh, DHCP ranges that are surfaced, uh, bind domains that are surfaced, etc. So when you've done all this, uh, your services are ready to be staged. They're you know ready to, they're configured, you can do something with them. So when you use the build command, the surface uh, configuration and data will enter OpenPCF staging area. When it's in the OpenPCF staging area, uh, you can actually install and start it after you've inspected it and you like it. So if you install and start, it's active on the machine. But the nice thing, of course, is that if you don't like it, you can go back. You can actually clean. You know, when you, when you uninstall, you get back to the staging area. And when you clean, you're back at the beginning again. And you can repeat this as many times as you want, which is very convenient if you're developing services and you know, working with it. So these services here are the services we set up automatically with that configuration file. So we have this machine. It's running all the services we actually need for uh, deployment of, of operating systems. So let's see how we can use this machine then. Um, software provisioning then. We have a data center, 120 machines, made with Inkscape, by the way. <laughs> and um, we zoom in a little. And we take this first machine that's running all those services. Uh, only it's running services, but it doesn't have data yet. So let's associate a data store. It can be a USB disk. It can be a Symmetrix, if you like your storage a little bit bigger. Um, and you put some ESOs on this. Now, OpenPCF has the tools and utilities that can help you with connecting those ESOs to HTTP, NFS, SIF, TFTP, DXP, DHCP and uh, make sure that you can install it. It also has tools that allow you to register machines in uh, the installation system. So when you've done that, you can actually uh, you know, install your operating systems, just F12, install those machines, push uh, OpenPCF to these boxes using things like CF Engine, SCP, Puppet, if you want, and then have OpenPCF run its build, uh, install, start routines, and you're running your different services, different roles on different operating systems times the entire data center. This is actually stuff we test for real in, in our uh, testing environment. So um, having all this uh, in overview now, I want to give you a really quick, because I don't have too much time, I see, uh, overview of features. We support many operating systems. Uh, we do automatic connection to needed third-party repositories. Re Truck is not in Red Hat 4. OpenPCF knows about it, will connect to extra repositories and warn you that you're not connected. Automated dependency checking, so it knows which packages, packages to install to provide a certain service. Uh, open port detection, you accidentally left port 25 open, you're trying to install Postfix, you can't, OpenPCF knows about it, warns you about it. 
and uh, RBAC and firewall detection. Upcoming features, more platform descriptors, HPUX, Solaris, and AIX, and LDAP service integration for modules. That's my talk. <laughs> 15 minutes is up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait a second. Thank you. <laughs> Have a look at uh, OpenPCF.org. And um, I hope uh, I, I got the idea across. 